a tear rolling out of her eyes because she was upset and she was uh, anxious of her life. And I said to her, why are you crying? And she said to me, because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my life. I'm not sure where I'm going. I, I'm not sure I'm happy. And I asked her, tell me a bit more. And as we spoke and spoke, it expired that she was unhappy with lack of love in her life. She was single. It expired that she didn't have much money, so she was upset that she was poor. Um, she didn't have prospect of a good job. So those things were bothering her. I said to her, if I was to say to you, those things are very important, and let's park them aside for a few minutes, and let's delve in a deeper and more profound um, journey. She goes, what would that be? And I said, ask her, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, tell me, where, what is the food that you provide to your heart? What's your heart's food? And she said to me, why do I need my heart to be fed? And I said to her simply, because uh, did you know before our body functions, uh, before our brain comes to being um, in the fetus, in the fetus of uh, the baby in the womb of the mother, the heart suddenly starts pumping. What happens in that moment is that in the heart, the spark of life is breathed, and we know from the Quran that Allah breathes his ruh in it. And I equate that ruh or presence of that ruh with the light of Allah, as he defines it in Surah Nur, that Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, and the parable of this light is that like a niche in which there is a light, and the, light, and the whole verse goes on. So I, can, I, I consider our heart to be the vessel, the niche made of glass, brilliant and radiant, and inside that lies the light of Allah. So I said to her, you have a light inside you. If you obscure that light with all these desires to have material possessions, to have um, material, superficial love and um, other things, you can obscure it, the light of your uh, inner being will not come to make you happy. Alternatively, you can keep it clean. And for keeping it clean, you don't need material possession. To keeping it, you know, keeping your heart clean, um, to finding happiness, you don't need uh, anything else. For Muslims, for us believers, what we need is constant reminder of good deeds, virtuous deeds, uh, Ustaz Khuram Murad once said very beautifully, and I still remember, he said, in perpetual remembrance of Allah, um, your body becomes so accustomed to remembering that every part of your body does the dhikr of Allah without you even having to instigate it using your mind. In fact, your heart begins to beat in the rhythm as though it is, the, it is remembering Allah at every beat, but of course it does, because it cannot be without his permission. And then Ustaz Quran Murad, I still remember saying that it beats and beats and beats and between the beats it stops and asks Allah, Ya Allah, can I beat again? And when Allah says don't beat anymore, we are all gone. So true happiness comes from getting our hearts to become cleansed, accustomed to being in tune with Allah, allowing that light of Allah to come out into our life and more importantly, uh, beating in the same rhythm as the rhythm of Allah which is what I call the remembrance of Allah. It's the rhythm of Allah. Um, somebody just wrote, I've been generally happier since finding Islam, a base level of contentment I didn't have before. As the years have passed, I have become more aware that improving my heart and purifying my intention has uh, uh, given me an inner peace. Keeping healthy relationship, especially through prayer with Allah, has brought me true happiness and life of which I have never known before. That's precisely the point. Um, thank you, Linda, for making such an amazing um, confirmation of the point that I was making. Our heart is at the core of happiness. And if it's not content, you will not find happiness. And contentment of the heart comes only by responding the, to, to the beats and the rhythms of Allah. And that's the Number five, I know time is uh, flying fast. Um, diseased heart in, is an uh, empty heart, the converse of what we just said. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, truly there is a piece of flesh um, in the body which if it's wholesome, the whole body is healthy. Um, and if it is diseased, the whole body is diseased. Truly that is the heart. So keeping that physically and spiritually healthy is, a, is essential prerequisite to having happiness. A few things that I want to touch on that I believe Things that harm and heal our heart. 
you're feeling angry, angry, that harms the heart. What will heal your heart? Stop it and think, why am I angry? What's causing me the anger? What's the root of my problem? Do I need to be angry? Can I respond differently? Can I respond to my emotions slightly differently than just expressing in this particular way? Healing the heart requires you to think and reflect. Harming the heart requires you to just be angry. You feel hurt. Hurt and holding grudges in your heart because you've been hurt can cause problems. Ask yourself, talk to the people who have hurt you. Ask them. Tell them that you've been hurt nicely, of course. There's nothing better than expressing that feeling. I genuinely feel hurt. I genuinely feel you're not listening to me. I genuinely feel let down. Talk to them nicely. You feel upset, address it. Why do you want to suffer silently? Ask yourself, why am I upset? You feel jealous. Remember people who are worse than you, of course, who are stronger than you in money, in health. Sometimes I think I'm not very healthy when small illnesses afflict me, but then I think about bigger illnesses. And you know what? It enriches my soul. I feel that there are people who are worse off than I am. Um, it's about recognizing those ill feelings that are harming our heart and how to positively transform them so that the heart can be healed. You feel unloved. Why don't you love someone genuinely instead of waiting for someone to love you? You love somebody genuinely, they will love you in return. It's so amazing. We have to wait for somebody to love us, but we're not willing to give our love to somebody else genuinely. Love them. Friend, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad. Express your love to them. Go and talk to them. Tell them you love them. These are all aspects of things that make you and I feel happier. You feel disconnected from Allah. Yes, it will harm your heart, definitely. Have you thought of reconnecting through contemplative worship? And I want to separate prayers that people do out of ritual. And I want to talk about those people who actually deeply think and profoundly reflect on their prayer when they are praying. But Prophet was known as a person who, when praying, when he would stand in prayer, he would disconnect from the world as though he would not know and he does not know anybody. Contemplative prayer. In Salah, when we stand and pray five times a day, if it's mechanical, it has no benefit. If it's contemplative, it's got every benefit that it comes with. Reconnecting with Allah requires contemplative worship. You feel your eyes are strained, you're looking at things you should not be looking. Ask yourself, what's missing in my life? Why do I need to look at other things? Things that are not halal for me. Why do I need to look at those things? What's missing in my life? It's an indication of something happening. What's fueling my thoughts? What's stimulating my behavior right now? A healthy heart, a heart that wants to heal, would do everything possible to keep away the harmful elements. You feel empty inside you. When was the last time you fed your heart the food that it requires? Not ego, not praise, not just the things that make you feel arrogant and proud. That's not the food that the heart wants. Heart wants food that are true to the essence of the heart. When was the last time you slowed down, you feel burnt out, take time out. No longer you need to run behind useless things. I know so many people who are so busy doing this, doing that, hundreds of things. Some of you may be saying, no, you are also busy, but you know, I, alhamdulillah, I'm very grateful to Allah. I do take time out to be, to slow down in the middle of all the things that I do. That's why I believe I am able to maintain a level of, a same level of energy for some, it may be too high, but I believe it's only possible because I'm able to take time out. Things that harm our, and, and heal our heart, you feel your ears um, are preoccupied with useless noise, TV, useless music, movies, constantly, on the go, without stop. Just think about it. How much can your ears, your mind, your heart, your body take? Have you tried silence? 
and you think thought of disconnecting those toys, you feel your tongue is letting you down. One tool I find useful is how somebody else to use the same language back at you. I, uh, alhamdulillah, I don't use abusive language. But people are there. That's again the opposite to finding happiness. To find happiness, you have to find and stop and prevent those harmful elements affecting your heart. Find ways of healing it. Consult your heart. Wabisa bin uh, Mabab said, uh, I came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, you have come to ask me about righteousness. I said, yes, he then said, consult your heart. Righteousness is that which, he, which your soul feels tranquil and, uh, and the wrongdoing is that which it wavers in your soul and moves to and fro in the breast, even though people again and again have given your, you their legal opinion of it in its favor. In other words, that which is correct and right and good for your heart is that which is firm inside and that which wavers isn't good for you. Five, happiness, I believe, starts with a sound character. Ask yourself this question. What traits in my character do people like? What do people think about my character? Or are, you, or are we so oblivious of other people? So self-obsessed that we don't think about what other people perhaps think about our character. Ask an honest friend, a trusted friend, to tell you the truth. And the best one is ask your children. They'll be brutally honest. Happiness is sound character, as I said. What secret traits are there in my character? If people come to know, what would shame be a shame? What would make me feel ashamed? Think about being exposed and think about being exposed on the day of judgment where Allah says, you know, the smallest deed that we have will be an open day of judgment for everyone to see even if it's smaller than an atom weight. Happiness is about finding that character that knows, is able to guard itself soundly and not veer away. And if it does, it's able to return and correct itself. Happiness is sound character. Do I practice what I preach? Do you at high standard for everyone else? And never follow them for yourself? Do you give big talks but never follow the talks in your life? What genuinely makes you happy? What truly gives you satisfaction? What really calms your heart? What really helps you focus in your life? What? Actually, when am I the happiest? When was the last time you were truly happy? If these are a definition or indicators of happiness. What genuinely makes me happy? What gave me satisfaction? What calmed my heart down? What allowed me to focus in my life? And when was I last the most happy? Number six, happiness is in sharing. Share, care, and give away most things you don't need without wanting any return. Declutter your life. Connect with your fellow human beings more meaningfully. Share. Zakat is a wonderful concept in Islam. By the way, zakat is not a charity. Charity is voluntary. Zakat is, zakat is sharing an obligation to share that which is yours and deeply, dearly yours, but you must share the surplus of it, that which you don't need. Look around your house. What is it that you don't need? How much stuff do you have? How many gadgets do you carry on a regular basis? How much clothes do you own? own? How much do you need? How many pairs of shoes? How many handbags? How many this? How many that? I can talk about it for hours and hours. The question is, are you willing to share? It's okay if you, have a, you live within your own means. Nobody is saying you shouldn't. But can you share? Happiness is in sharing. My all-time favorite program on television is uh, That Secret Millionaire. For some people, it's very pretentious. But what I like about it is it takes people who are pretentious, who are very arrogant and full of themselves, and really knocks them and, and knocks some sense into them and gets them to think about real people. Ask yourself these questions. How much do I need to be happy? How much will I take with me when I'm gone? And what would be the consequences of the wealth that I leave on this earth? Simple question, isn't it? What will go with us? Very little. In fact, nothing. Number seven, happiness is in true relationships. Some of you have already said, how good is your relationship with your family, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister? How is your relationship with your wife or your husband? How about your relatives, close and far? Do you have any friends? How is your friendship? When was the last time you took the phone to a relative that you have not spoken to for years and years and actually said, you know what, I'm so sorry, I've not spoken to you. Somebody who hurt you picked up the phone and said, look, I'm really sorry, I've not spoken to you. I know you've hurt me and I'm holding that in my heart, but I'm here extending my hand. Can we be friends again? Can we continue our, our relationship again? Happiness is in true relationships and relationship must be sustained. 